These questions are taken from the Department of Education 2020 booklet. We are given a map with a scale and the scale is a bar scale. Question states, convert the bar scale on the map to a ratio scale in the form of 1 is 2. What you see on the left hand side is the bar scale that I have made bigger in order for you to see what exactly we are doing with it. Firstly, we need to measure the size of the bar. Using our rulers, we measure the size of the bar. According to you, you will measure it on the booklet and you will find that it will be 1.5 centimeters. So what this means is that the length of the bar scale is equal to 100 kilometers. Now that means the 1.5 centimeter is equal to 100 kilometers. In other words, it means 1.5 centimeter on the map is equal to 100 kilometers on the ground. When leaving scales in the form of 1 is 2 as indicated by the question, we generally leave it in the form of centimeters on both sides. From conversion, we know that they are 100,000 centimeters in 1 kilometer. Conversions will be done in a separate uh, video, but if you take the 100 kilometers and multiply it by 100,000, in order to make it centimeters, we arrive at 10 million centimeters. In order to arrive at the last step where the final answer is 1 is 2, so we divide both sides by 1,5. So if we divide the left hand side by 1,5, we arrive at 1. And if we take the 10 million and we divide it by 1,5, we are left with 6 million and 666,666. Determine the approximate distance between Durban and Riches Bay, which lies northeast of Durban. If we look at Durban and Richards Bay, I've drawn a line between these two places. The line will indicate where we place our ruler. And the first thing we will do is we'll measure the distance from Durban to Richards Bay. So if we measure this distance in the book, we'll find that it will be 4.2 centimeters. This tells us that the 4.2 centimeters is the distance on the map, but we are required to find the distance on the ground. Thereafter, we write down our scale. And remember, in the exams, generally, our questions are in sequence. So what they've asked you previously to work out, you may use in the next question. So be very aware of this method of questioning. So our scale tells us that one centimeter on the map is equal to 6,666,666 on the ground. Using the same format, we know that we have 4,2 as our distance on the map. So we put this below that and we place x in terms of the distance on the ground. Now that we've put our information in this order, we can now cross multiply. So I take the 1 and multiply it by the x as you can see in the bottom line. And I take the 4,2 and multiply it by the 6,666,666. Multiplying our figures through, we arrive at our answer in centimeters. But we know that distance on the ground is best shown in kilometers. So therefore, we have to convert this answer. From our rules of conversion, we know we have to divide by 100,000. And we arrive at 279,99 kilometers as required by the question. Refer to the distance table below when answering the following questions. A. Calculate the difference between the distances calculated in the previous question and the distance given in the table. Right at the bottom I've shown the distance we've worked in the previous question which is 279,99 kilometers. Reading a table like this, if you look at the top it says Durban and Ladysmith. This means from Durban to Ladysmith, it would be 236 kilometers. So if you look at the next two places there, it's Ladysmith and Richards Bay. And the number right between the two of them is 336. This means that's the distance between Ladysmith and Richards Bay. Our previous question spoke about Durban and Richards Bay. So if we look at the distance between Durban and Richards Bay, we will realize it is 170. All that's required here is the difference between the two 
distances in which we were presented with. So we have 279,99 which we've worked out. Minus the 170 in the table and we get 109,99 kilometers. B. Which do you think is the most accurate? The distance calculated using the bar scale or the distance given in the table? Give a reason for your answer. The table is the more accurate reading as this is the actual distance on the ground whereas you remember from the map we took a straight line which does not reflect the true distance on the ground. The fisherman traveling from Durban to Richards Bay only has a quarter of a tank of petrol. The fuel consumption of his car is 12 kilometers per liter and his car has a 50 liter tank. Use the distance table to determine if he has enough petrol to make it to Richards Bay. From the distance table we've learned that it's 170 kilometers from Durban to Richards Bay. Now knowing that his car does 12 kilometers per liter, we can use this information and we can find out how many liters of petrol he needs for the 170 kilometers. So we take the 170 kilometers and we divide it by 12 kilometers and we arrive at the amount of liters that he needs to go from Durban to Richards Bay. The important bit of information that's given to us is that he only has a quarter tank of petrol and we know that his tank is a 50 liter tank. So working this out, we will determine whether he has enough petrol in order for him to reach Richards Bay. A quarter can be written as 0 0.25 and we multiply that by 50, which is his tank, and we get 12.5 liters. So by looking at our calculations, we can determine an outcome that he does not have enough petrol in order for him to reach Richards Bay. If E is traveling at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour, determine how long, I remember how long is time, determine how long it will take him to get to Richards Bay, write your answer in hours and minutes. Using our formula, speed is equal to distance over time, and making time the subject of formula, so we know that time is equal to distance over speed. Substituting our amounts into the formula, we know 170 is the distance and the speed is 80 kilometers per hour. Calculating through, we get 2,125 hours. But remember now, that's 2,125 hours. The 125 must be converted into minutes. In order for us to convert to minutes, we take the decimal part of the answer, which is 0, 0,125, and we multiply it by 60 and we arrive at 7,5 and that becomes our minutes. Remember that the 2,125 is made up of 2 and 0,125 and this is how we apply the 0,125 times 60.